And today we are going to be playing, wait for it, Juniper's Knot. I don't know if y'all have heard of this game before. So, um, this is actually kind of a new one for me. But, uh, let's go ahead and get things started, shall we? Much of these stone walls and floors have weathered into dirt and dust, revealing the foundation. Much of the ceiling, too, has crumbled to the ground, layering and flecks and bits. Below me now is such tired soil. Tired, tired soil. Pah. There isn't much to do here but burn dead leaves and wait. Watch the smoke rise, curl up from curl up fresh and tickle the inside of your nose. Dull as bones it is. But what can I do? I'm stuck. Some might say I'm cursed. I'd rather say bound. I do not like to think very much about it. I kneel to the small fire I've started, taking up a few embers and loam them into my palm. It's the glow that stirs me and reminds me that my heart is still beating. I bring the scorched earth close to my face and shut my eyes and breathe it in. I taste it and spit. It's barren. I'm probably going to wait here forever. What? There's an unnatural rustling not far off west. West, I. What is it? Who? Another here? My eyes sharpen and my ears perk up. My heart thumping into my throat. Should I be forward? Give a call? Would that work? Cry out, plead. Help, help, damsel. A full sort of lie. Would that work? No. Go still. Listen. Just listen. Whatever it is, it's right busy about here. Noise is tumbling, ruffle from old doorways, chests wide, o wine open, shops and homes are explored. A scavenger, then. Someone found this place. <clears throat> Hearing these sounds is just odd. It shouldn't be odd, but it is strange. I should remember such sounds. Oh, the noise is getting closer, is it? I... imagining this? No, no, surely in the manor now, poking around the kitchen and the lounge. I decide on the chance that I would find... Uh, that I will find its way to the ballroom to stand and take a good posture and wait on the... Wait and await this new company. Wow. And to my surprise, he shows up at the door within the next minute. A boy? A man? What kind of thing is this again? He's carrying a pack and has a bottle on his waist. Maybe he's a traveler, then. Doesn't look like he's noticed me yet. He just wandered in. Stare adrift. After a few steps, his I catch his eye. He moves a little closer to look me in the face. And then some more to see my feet. He stops there. He's staring now and doing nothing more. Come here! As if realizing something, he stiffens. His heart beats aloud in the air. I need you to help me. Come on, come, on, come here. He doesn't bend. What is he up to? What does he think this is. <laughs> I speak again, this time with a little bite. The hell are you waiting for, tit? Oh, oh, I have been rude? I have been rude? Oh, well, you're quarterly invited to move your dumb legs. <laughs> for the first conversational words I've spoken in centuries, they could have been worse. 
He shakes with fear and stands back. A uh, fiend? Slow are you? What does it matter? You're going to piss off. You're, you're, what are you pissing your trousers for? Get over here. Uh, no way. You'll eat my soul. I'll, what? A smile cracks along my face. Ha! Ha 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 ha! Your soul. <laughs> oh my, oh my, oh my. When was it that... When was it last I laughed like this? I grin, I grin so brightly watching Chekli as he shrinks back a little and a, a little more. <laughs> now, person, person, you're just perfect. A gesture won't lend you an ear. Therefore, I... He... he your soul? <laughs> At my laughter, he glares, stealing himself, he answers me. You're not catching me, Dimon. You got that? I've read the stories. I'm tired, but I ain't stupid. Am I famous? T Mercy, I left a mark. You know what I mean. Hell, I really don't. Fiends, devils, demons, all ya, all I ya know. I know how it is. And how is it? You are all foul, and you try to trick people. <laughs> trick you? Trick? <laughs> oh, I oh, I just really can't believe it. What happened in the years I've been gone? Dot dot dot. And what if I'm not going to? Or no, what if I'm not trying to trick you, person? What if I just want to hear you? Just want to hear me? What the hell? Like, what is it you've read, lad? Do tell. I'd love to hear a story. I'm a little bored. I think I'll just leave. You turn tail on a bloodthirsty wicked fiend? Look, I know something dirty when I see it. You ain't fooling no one. <laughs> He's so precious. Alright, alright. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. I... Like all us fiends, devils, and demons, I'm plainly trying to win your extravagant soul through my dastardly wit. Honest and true, I'm a rook. <laughs> but please, please, at least tell me what you have read. Why the hell do you want to listen to me so much? Because I'm voice. Wow, because I'm bored, and your voice. <sighs> your voice, I swoon. Bah! Horse <laughs> <laughs> I really do want to listen. Would you be so kind? Dot dot dot. He genuinely consider. He's ah. He's genuinely considerate. Such a delight. I do want to hear him. In the meantime, I look over him a little more finely. He has got a fair face, but though the fabric of his shirt, I can see that he's muscled. Muscled. A surprise. Even the soldier boys seem to be a bit lean back in the days. I erode Marley. I wonder what he does. He smells like an animal in the most pleasant way. That can be said, but it's quite good. Also, he has a faintest, faintest scent of watercress about him, mingled with black oil. What a peculiar, peculiar, blah, peculiar lad. Ha. Huh. better not stick around. Dot, dot, dot. I guess I can tell you some things, though. Uh, yeah, I guess I can tell you. Long as you stay put, you hear? What's keeping me from you is more powerful than I care to challenge person. Yeah, right, whatever. Here's a story, one from a book I read a lot when I was little. Oh, pardon, pardon. I find it very hard to think of you any littler. Quiet. Dot, dot, dot. There was a cobbler in Whitaker who had nothing to eat. He was poorer than dirt, and he didn't give a girl, or he didn't have a girl, and it made him real sore. He didn't have a girl? 
A dame, a sweetheart. He didn't have a wife. Ah, continue. While he was walking down an alley, he met this man. He had on a dark cloak with a hood that covered his eyes, and the cobbler couldn't make heads or tails of it. He stopped and asked the cloaked man if he had, if he liked his shoes he worked on. The... That's stupid. Why would he do that? Because he needed all the work he could get. Well, he shouldn't have gone around run ruining shoes if what he needed was work. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. The cloak man said he wasn't wearing shoes, but he could use a new pair. But obviously, the cobbler's a cobbler, so he can't, don't make shoes. He tells him that. And so the cloak man says, Actually, I could really use some new shoes. The cobbler looks at him weird and says, He can get them with the guy's stick. And the cloak man says, Would you do that? I'd do something for you then. And the cobbler says, Like what? And the cloak man says, Perhaps anything. And he leans forward darkly and says, I smirk at the action. Now, I know what you're thinking. I've heard this one before, and I don't know how it goes. Well, you don't. Because the cobbler says, perhaps not. And he walks away. How exciting. But here's the thing. While he's walking, he notices the alley's longer than usual, but he doesn't think about it. Though, thinks he is just tired from the work and keeps walking. But while he's walking, he sees another man in a cloak. He stops and asks the man if he could use his shoes getting worked on. If he could use his shoes getting worked on. The cloaked man says he doesn't have any shoes. The cobbler stops and looks at him and says he'd better not he, and says he'd better get moving. The cloaked man says he could really use some new shoes. And while he's moving, you know, I nod. He keeps running into the man in the cloak and he can't find it in the, at the alley of actually. Every time it takes longer and longer till he sees the man in the cloak. On the eighth time he runs into the man, he stops and asks, what's the game? And the cloak man looks at him with yellowed eyes. He says, I could really use some new shoes. For what, the cobbler says. I don't know, the cloaked man says, perhaps anything. What do you want? The cobbler knows exactly what he wants, but fiends have yellow eyes, and he knows a fiend. Tch, nonsense. I actually sighed hearing that. So what you're telling what so what you're telling me of this story anything good to adhere to is I might have already dropped you. Dunno, I don't think you did. Why not? He shrugs. I don't think you did. I must really, I really must say, your manner of storytelling is queer. What? It's strange. Oh. I don't know, it's just very strange to my ears. I guess? How's you, so how's the story end? The cobbler gets desperate and makes a pact with the fiend to get new shoes. By the next day, the fiend will give him gold for him to do that. So the fiend gives him the gold, but he doesn't make it. The fiend traps him in the alley so he can't leave. His soul is taken and he's damned. The fiend eats his soul and leaves the alley for a farm. A farm? Yeah, I know. I snort. <laughs> That's comedy. I think it's supposed to mean something, but eh. Point is, don't get caught up with the fiends no matter what. You are getting caught up with the fiend right now. Well... You don't feel right. I what? He shakes his head. Nothing. I look at him and try to figure him out. Figure out his options and his story. And the time he's told it, he seems to have taken another idea of me. I'm not sure why that is either. Apparently, you telling me- I appre- well, I appreciate you telling me that story. Don't mention it. Dot dot dot. So opaque. You still wary of me? Yeah, a little. I frown. Well, do you want me to tell you another story? Dot, dot, dot. The unsolicited offer throws me. Is he really asking? But no, if I'm too eager, I can't ask for that. No. I pause. 
No, I'm fine. If you say so. I'm gonna go now. Go? Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. I have to go, so... I'm going. Ah. Dot, dot, dot. He begins to turn around. Dot, 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 exclamation point. Stay. Please stay. Please. I won't take your so. Honest, I won't. And then, like an idiot, I move my hand out, reaching for him, with a singular wanting. I move past the second meter, past the circle's edge with my fingers, and withdraw with a start to s as they set a fire. Dropping to my knees, I scream, I cry out and howl, clutching my f the flames and smothering them. Tears crawl down my face, and I snarl in pain, I shut my eyes and moan. I hear him step a bit closer. Y you're stuck here? Looking up at him from the ground, I feel my teeth chattering. Oh no. I know why I want him to stay. Yes, I know. To rend him. Because, as if it wasn't just so funny enough that vines sweat down from the walls and the grass was born through the stone so close just outside this putrid circle. There is not, there, now there is a human breathing before me. Comedy. Everywhere but here, but near to me, to my desolating blood, the years have damned me and cut and clawed beneath my skin, scars invisible but nevertheless binding. I hate it. I hate, I hate it so much. I hate the feeling it gives to my heart and the strength it takes in kind. I hate it. My flesh heats and I look away from him. Looking into his eyes enrages me. How long have you been there? Long enough to beg! Long enough, you hear? Too long. I've been in this stinking pile. It doesn't matter to you. I wanna know. Well, I don't wanna tell. I... I... Sorry, miss. Miss? I take a look at my clicking, stuttering hand. My sight still burned with tears. It's sizzling. Small blazes dance between the fingers. I take my tongue to it, soothing the burns. You're a bold one, I. Calling me a flap. <laughs> uh? What? Huh? No. You're no flapper, lady. It means something different, you know. Miss, it's just what you're supposed to call older ladies, out of respect. Lapping the flames from the back of my hand, I glance at him. That right. Are you okay? I stick my ring finger and squint. What's that? Alright, fine. Is that okay? Alright. <laughs> Alright, I, I. I'm a fiend, yes? Heal fast. Though I can still feel it in a snap and pop in the joints. I whistle cool air through my digits and take myself from the ground. Dot, dot, dot. Are you going to stay? I... I could. Ah! Uh Oh. Thank you. I'm actually lost right now. Uh, lost, is it? Lost. Ha! Huh. That's a sweet irony. <laughs> dot 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 question mark. Don't look so addled, person. The irony is quite obvious here, isn't it? He squints. Think. After all, I cannot even be lost forever and ever. I'll know where I am and here and where I am is stuck. <laughs> I laugh again, but he doesn't find it funny. He doesn't seem to find much of anything at all. I quit it, wiping away my finger in a tear. <laughs> oh, oh! I know this place is so intimately. I'd reckon I'd read in your face. He jerks and gives his gives his head a shake. If, if you... Hmm. <laughs> uh, um, if you were know where this is, do you know where's more? Ah, so earnest. Don't know what... Don't know what more is. I know mores. Mores. Hi, mores, mores, you follow? I don't know what those are. My, my. It's all right, dizzy chick. We're dancing. Time is making fools of both of us. <laughs> he looks a bit hazy, as though he's having a hard time keeping his eyes fresh. I turn my head silently. What's more?
more person where I was born live? Ah, a town! A new town! City! I think it's been there for a while. That right. He doesn't speak, and I glance over just quickly enough to catch him at the end of nodding. Did you know this place was a war for a time? Miss, I don't know what that is. It's a dead place, a wet place. I too was born in a moor. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Can't your stomach read a mood? Bleeding hell, I was about to tell the tale. S sorry. You're hungry, is it? Starving. Us front fiends eat. Here, we only eat souls and only for pleasure. Quit choking. Choking? Hey, you got any food? Dot dot dot. What are you blithering on about now? I look like I got food. I don't got any food, idiot. However, here. I thrust up my hands and but just before the barrier palms up. Dot 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 question mark. Give me some chestnuts in your pack. I smell them. He hesitates. Why? So I can gobble them up, what do you think? I'll cook them for you. They're not long from the branch or the ground. It smells like you haven't cooked them. And nor have you eaten them. You prefer the taste of them cooked. He nods slowly. I twitch my fingers, waiting. There's something you want up for this. Your company for the morning till noon. That's it? I nod. Okay, deal. His spoken words like a he he's spoken words like a nail. It resonates deeply, echoing, and then shakes ash from the walls. <clears throat> The startled void covers his mouth. Deal, was it? Hmph. <laughs> I smile. Here. Did I just... I... You made a pact. Dot 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 dot. Hmm. Shaking his head, he sighs. Wordlessly, carefully, he takes off his pack and opens it up. Withdrawing a bushel of nuts in two hands, he moves forward. I look down at him, still waiting. And with a steady movement, he brings his hands to mine. He holds my gaze, and I don't move at all. But I do think... I think, wait, couldn't I just... I couldn't... I just... You know... Quickly just... My hands are tense, but it ends with a thought. Dot dot dot. He drops a heap of, into my palms, and my fingers curl around it. Again, I turn up my lips. Seeing this, he hops back. Give me a moment. I take all but one into my left hand, holding the last between my right and thumb and forefinger. Opening my mouth, I bring between my teeth and punctuate, puncture it with one of my fangs. I bite through the shell, making it a rough cut around from one end to another, and take it out. Observing the inner flesh of it, I spit out the shreds. Satisfied, I go on to carve the second, the third, the fourth, and so on. And when I finish, I hold the chestnuts aloft and make a hearth from my hand. This will take a while, person, but not so long. Might we talk some? Uh, sure. Then have a seat. Where did we leave off before your stomach so rudely interrupted? He sits, chin on his knees, and half, and eyes half lidded. More something? Aha, uh -huh, yes, I'll tell you a story about moors in return for yours. But rather than a story, I chat with being nice. I, I save your story for a bit later. What do you want to talk about? Moors. <laughs> oh, right. My moor, eh? Mine. Dot, dot, dot. There really isn't much to say, come to think of it. You say you were born there? I, like all fiends, I was born in waste. You've read about us, I, how about how we make barren anywhere we stand unconsciously drain life from our earth and for our substance. Mm. <laughs> Pallid land and collagenous loft air crawling low and damp with miasma, the pith of plants choked sterile. Wait, what? Okay. I feel my face twisting in the scowl. Sounds, uh... Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. It sounds hideous, I know, because it is. Did you grow up there? Ha! <laughs> Neat question. I, I, I did. 
Had a mother and a father always got me wondering, is this where I'll be when I get old? A bloody moor? Haha. <laughs> Guess not. You left it then. Left it from many places. What was it like growing up there? Tedious. Maybe I shouldn't have brought this all up. At all, I? You just don't want to talk about it? That's okay. No, no. It's not a matter of okay. There's just not much of anything to talk about. It's all very colorless. Dot, dot, dot. What about yours? My what? Your more. Oh, it's not really anything special. It's just your typical city. Typical? To me, it's not the same to you. Well, it's big, loud, streets are packed with floats, lots of smoke and frick. <laughs> My mom and pop run a farm near there because they're crazy. Oh, that's... is that where your scent's from? My scent? You smell like herbs and horses and it's quite adorable. Dot, dot, dot. You also smell like black oil, but I'm not sure where that came from. The city's modern. I have to lift canisters of oil from place to place every Wednesday. Oh, tough. He nods, ha. Huh? Very tough. Hey, knock it off, will ya? It's, I do hard work. He kind of slurs his sentence, but nevertheless determined to appear strong. I believe you. For your noble, strong efforts, I think it's time for your story. You ready? He shrugs. I clear my throat and loosen up my shoulders somewhat, poisoning my fire hand dramatically. Hmm. Did you know that stars sometimes act as rain in the night sky? Do you mean uh, like a meteor shower? Hush. I have heard of it, but I've never seen it. Well, I have heard of it, and I know it because I have seen it. Imagine this, thousands and thousands of light, and they all bleed along the cold cerulean mirror above, slowly, very slowly. Follow. They are so very slow that it makes that as they make the long stretch out above you, you hardly notice their drag. It is impeccable slowness. Imagine it. He nods very slowly and nods in another way, drifting into my memory. And flash! I flare the hand. I flare the fire in my hand. The chestnuts wax, spitting and crackling. He jumps the light, catching his eyes. Flash! <laughs> flash! Flash! With each of these words, I stroke the flames, and they lick up dance and dance wildly. Each single brilliant streak cuts through the lights, independent and free, and then it dies. The magic in my palm fades and sighs. My pul it pulses and fades and pulses and fades. His eyes glaze over like this, like a heart's last beating. Death is quickly to these stars. Straining my eyes from the light, had they so turned, I had noticed the gaze upon the boy. Say, person, that sorrow flowed to you, huh? He thinks of an answer. It is. That there isn't a right answer, person. You don't have to consider it like there is one. Do you, you think it's sorrowful? I do. That is interesting, truly interesting. I end the fire, leaving the chestnuts to cool. I blow on them and breathe on them, ear switching. These ones are there. These are done now. I held them out to him. My end of the bargain is met, and you know what? I'll do you a favor. I'll go ahead and roast the rest of your chestnuts in my fire here. I motion to the dead leaves. I'll do this for free, for no deal. All that's left now is for you to stay. Squinting as he waits a little, but soon enough crawls forward on his hands and calves to and pat his pack and toe. He stops at the edge of the circle and takes the fruits from my hand. He looks at me wearing a kind of ugly expression. What? Settling onto his rear, he keeps looking at me, but a bit less ugly, he seems to be wondering something. Eventually, he looks at the nuts in his hand, and instead, he face, his face softening. The shells one pops in... He shells one and pops it into his mouth. His face flushes naturally, and he chews a little. He pushes his pack into the circle with his foot and shifts back a few feet and speaks. Which part of that... Which part of uh, that was a story, miss? Well, look at that. Aren't you... You aren't entirely daft. <laughs> I take up the bag from the ground and shake it a little. 
It doesn't smell like there's any more chestnuts in here. I open it and check, and sure enough, I'm finding the excess with some burrs on it. There's still some green. I toss those ones. I still rummage through it, and just in case if there might be something more of interest, there's not. Twas a preamble, twas, but there is a story for certes. I told you I've seen this. Blinking, he nods. On a with a hollow sound, I crack one of the chestnuts apart of my mouth. I grow the fire at my feet and drop it in there. No more flashy tricks now. As I retaliate, er, as I retire these actions, I speak to the boy. I was not alone with those stars then. Oh my god, okay. I am going to save. Um, like and favorite and subscribe if y'all like this story. This is Juniper's Knot, and I will see you all tomorrow.